All right, we got the Galaxy S4 here. This is Rob Nazarian with Talk Android, and I uh, just want to go through the initial setup, um, which Samsung did a little bit different job here um, uh, with the first time that you start the phone up. This is the Sprint version, and um, some of the stuff is going to be the same. We're going to select your uh, language, uh, which is, of course, uh, English. Oops, I hit the next. There it is. And, um, and then, of course, there's uh, Wi-Fi here, which I can go ahead and connect to. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just have that set up as open right now. Okay, now um, create a new Samsung account. This is uh, they're going to uh, looks like uh, you know I can skip it. But uh, of course, Samsung's pushing that as well, um, a lot. Now, uh, do you have a Google account? I'm going to go ahead and just set that up now quickly. Now, the next thing, um, after you get the uh, past the Gmail and all the uh, usual uh, location stuff, is they do offer Dropbox, 50 gigabytes of storage for two years if you sign in. Um, I have an account, but I'm not going to bother with it right now. And now this is the interesting thing here is uh, learn about key features and this gives you an option to turn on or off any of these and of course the defaults are already set. Interesting enough air gesture is set to off um, and uh, we'll be going into some how to's um, and walkthroughs on all these uh, at another video um, but S Beam is already on and it explains uh, to you what exactly each of these things are. Um, air gesture, um, no, I mixed them up. Air views on, okay, air gesture is off. Um, that's where you can, you know, swipe your hand um, to, you know, swipe, uh, say, different pictures in your gallery, stuff like that. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. Um, and then, of course, voice commands is, is off by default but we're going to go ahead and turn that on smart stay is on uh, which is an important thing smart pause for looking away on videos um, so if you're watching a video and you turn away um, the video will automatically pause we'll turn that on smart scroll we're going to turn that on as well we're going to want to test all these things now easy mode um, well for again adapt display this mode auto automatically optimizes the display to the best qual um, quality. Not really sure how all that works, but we're going to leave that on. Now, easy mode, I'm going to leave off for now. But this is uh, where you can set... This is really, actually, a very good feature that Samsung has implemented that's going to go unnoticed by a lot of people, I think. This makes it so if you put this on, you can give this phone to somebody who does, you know, is just not tech savvy at all, just very simple and wants something, say like an iPhone, that's very simple. The interface is going to be completely different than what you would normally get with TouchWiz, and we'll go through that in another video, but you just uh, go ahead and put um, flick that to on if you're giving the phone to somebody if they're getting it brand new out of the box that's like say you're giving the phone to your mother or something your grandmother and uh, you know you'd help them out make sure you put that on um, so the um, and of course all these are going to be available in the settings so we're gonna so that would be the only item we're going to leave off and we'll go ahead and hit next and the uh, device name is there, and we'll go ahead and finish. And of course, now the Sprint default configuration uh, has been downloaded as being installed. Um, now, there's a new, an interesting thing here: is allow Google to check all apps installed to this device for harmful behavior this is something I haven't seen uh, too much there uh, on any phone uh, that I've uh, started up so Sprint's gonna go ahead and uh, install uh, their stuff which I'm sure we're not gonna care for any of it but there you go, Sprint Music Plus, CBS Sports, stuff we don't really care. It'd be nice if they give us the option to say no, but they don't. Uh, 
Okay, so we're in. Now you'll notice um, that the main widget now looks, uh, I guess it's downloading something there. I was downloading some apps for old, old apps uh, that I've had. Um, the main widget looks a little different. Um, this is the Galaxy S3 to the um, to the right here, and um, it, it has a much different look to it uh, completely. And uh, you know that, that type of icon for weather seems to be where everybody's heading these days. Um, but overall, as usual, uh, Samsung doesn't change too much with their TouchWiz. Now you'll notice the top, they pointed this out at the, rock, at the um, Radio City Music Hall, it's no longer dark, the notification area it matches the rest of it. Uh, going through the um, main pages, uh, you know, they're going to feature Samsung Hub and their uh, stuff like Story Album. Uh, that we'll be getting into, and of course, uh, Flipboard, which is going to feature AirView. Uh, but TouchWiz in itself is going to be fairly close to what normal. There's the menu button, uh, looks very similar. Now, this is Android 4.2.2, and this is 4.1.2. Um, the settings, uh, though, is going to be a little different. Uh, let's see. It's going to have a different look now with tabs, uh, so I'll, you go to settings either way. Uh, the old way is scrolling up and down, and over here you're going to go in and hit the tabs to get to the get to the certain areas. Uh, this is something LG has done uh, with their UI. I think you know it's different than Android stock Android, but I think it's it's you know it's not crazy. It's you know it's. I think it might have an easier usability for some people, uh, so that you know nothing wrong with that. Um, now, the right here, this is brand new um, as far as the power control uh, and the notification. Uh, last year, just had you know these right here, and you could go in. Oops, it had just basically here what you could scroll through but here you get a whole bunch of them and you can edit these uh, you can go in and hit um, whoops hit here and you can go ahead and change the order of them um, and so say you want uh, screen rotation um, let's see oh there it is I can switch spots right there and then uh, go back so and they give you a lot of the different things that we saw in the startup um, like air view and stuff air gesture where you can quickly turn them off or on that's pretty nice see th this is the kind of enhancements I like to see at least I mean I'm not a fan of touch whiz but the problem with say on the flip side HTC they keep changing the overall um, you know the app drawer and all that good stuff uh, where it just you know changes things dramatically too much um, whereas Samsung you know is everything looks the same um, it, it there isn't much of a difference there and, and I think um, you know that's that's easier for consumers now one thing I noticed off the bat when I was typing in my email address we just go into messaging here and uh, tap to compose a message oops oops what am I doing here uh, the keyboard uh, like this right here um, has the number key right here in uh, vertical mode uh, whereas in the Galaxy S3 and 4.1.2 it uh, does not so this is uh, really nice I like that a lot and I guess they did that with the 5 inch display versus the 4.8 inch display as you can see also here the phones are relatively the same size and of course um, the Galaxy S4 is a little thinner uh, but you really can't tell by looking at them. Um, uh, but let's look. Just look at the keyboard in horizontal mode, and uh, you know, not much, uh, 
Oh, well, the, the, there you go. The numbers are dedicated on the Galaxy S4 as well. So really not a lot of changes with TouchWiz. Um, some, some, some enhancements, obviously a lot of software features that we'll be getting into. Stuff with the camera and the smart stay, the smart pause, and, uh, you know, story album and all these things. But those are software features that Samsung's added to this version of... Um, well, really, with Android 4.2.2 and TouchWiz, uh, let's just verify that. That is 4.2.2, not 4.2.1. Um, oops, that's right. I, I've got to go to uh, the tabs now. I'm not used to this. Let's see where they're going to have it. Probably in the More section. There we go. About device. And it is, yes, 4.2.2, which is what... Uh, they did uh, tell us, I think. Another thing is the uh, stock browser has this toolbar at the bottom now. That's new. Uh, it goes away when you scroll around, and you can also flick it up. And there are a number of things here, like, for example, Twitter. It, doesn't go to, it actually opens up the app. Um, so it, there is apps, and it also can be web pages. Internet Movie Database is on there. Um... I guess it looks like the app, um, but it's definitely over the browser itself. Now, what you can do is um, say, you know, this. You can long press and uh, remove it um, or manage and go in and change the order. And you can also go in the settings. Oh, no, settings is the last one. It's just that. settings you go in from here. It's called the Lumen Toolbar and um, you know auto show and showing it and all that good stuff uh, you can also add stuff but it doesn't look like you can add a bunch of apps um, there are some like Yelp is in there um, that could be the website I noticed that for um, like Facebook it says installed and Twitter installed um, this apps is installed. There's an um, you can add Amazon and stuff like that. So interesting little toolbar for quick access to things while you're web browsing. But that is uh, looks like uh, new to TouchWiz as well. So um, that's the uh, smart scrolling uh, option uh, right there. I must have tilted the phone a little bit, but we'll get into that at a uh, at another video as well, another how to. So um, anyways. That's the uh, that's the uh, browser. All right. Now another uh, feature is this uh, toolbar that uh, comes out to, from the left hand side. Uh, if you hold down the back key, it opens it up, and then you can swipe it away. This is for multitasking, and you can scroll through all the apps um, that work for multi window support will be in here. And in fact, you can go to edit. And so if you take anything away, whoops. If you hold down, all right, there we go, uh, and take it away from it, it'll be here when you're d done. So you'll always know what apps um, are available just by going to edit, and you know you'll have it there. And then you can just long press and put it in, put it in any order that you want. So how does it work? Well, um, let's try it. So let you, but we would drag the app uh, in order to do it. Drag it right out. And there's um, internet or the internet, and then let's just say we want to open up um, email as well. Just drag that right out, and now we have both uh, screens open. You can scroll either one, and uh, works pretty good. You can also um, resize it, and you can uh, switch which ones and you can close whatever um, and then go back to one and then of course you can go back and then of course if you want to get rid of the toolbar or um, that bar whatever they call it um, you can just um, I'll go to the home screen to show you so you can see it better just long press and it's gone and then that, that little thing won't be there anymore um, if you and you can bring it back at any time um, whoops hit the uh, so and it stays there throughout your different home screens. And then hold long press to take it off.
So anyway, uh, we're going to be spending a lot more time with this phone and we're going to do a lot of how-tos and stuff. It's, uh, you know, going to be another very popular phone from Samsung and um, that's uh, pretty much, um, you know, touch whiz for this uh, year the difference is and of course these this is what's going to come to the galaxy s3 and the galaxy note 2 as well the same touch with interface going to be the same stuff um except for um the controls for the infrared uh that will be the only difference uh other than that it should everything should be there so anyways thanks for watching this is rob nazarian with talk android